Thank you for watching the Table Community Church video podcast. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. Hello, uh, my name is Wayne Penton. I'm a student pastor here at the Table. Um, so glad that you are joining us this morning for worship. Um, I, I know uh, that you and all of us are aware that uh, what is happening right now in, in this world and in this country is nothing like any of us have ever seen. Um, but we do not want to be fearful. We don't want to worry. We want to uh, follow the instructions that we've been given um, and the, the wisdom. And we want to be praying for our leaders. We want to trust ultimately that God is in control of it all. Um, and we want to lean into him, uh, be guided by his spirit, uh, be praying and asking him um, to show us what to do, how we can better serve this community and this country. I know, or, and I know that um, us as a church, uh, as staff, we are doing that uh, because we want to serve this community the best way that we know how. And so I encourage you to continue to uh, check in with us, uh, give us updates, let us know how you're doing. Um, if we can pray for you, please reach out. Um, we'll continue to give you instructions as we get them, um, but we're going to continue. Uh, we're going to worship uh, anyway this morning. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, we're going to. I'm going to teach, uh, continuing in our um, S Word series. Um, so glad to be doing that this morning. Um, I hope and pray. Uh, I've been praying for, and, and I'm hopeful that this message would be um, one that points us to Jesus, one that points us to his goodness and his love for all who would believe in him. So will you pray with me as I begin to teach us this morning? Uh, God, thank you so much for you. Um, thank you for your love for us. Um, thank you that you are in control of it all. Lord, let us uh, not have a spirit of fear, uh, but let us trust you. Um, let us be strong. Um, let us be people who are willing to uh, love people. Let us not move in panic. Uh, but let us be people who are listening to wisdom. Uh, God, we pray for the leaders of this country and of this world. Uh, we pray that you would equip them with all that they would need to guide us um, through this. Uh, we pray for those who are sick, that you would heal Jesus for your glory. We just we need you um, as always, God. Uh, we trust you. We know that you are good. Uh, I pray that you would be with me over the next few moments as I speak today. Um, I pray that it would go directly to our hearts for those of us who are believers in Jesus and you, Lord, that we would be uh, reminded for those of us who have yet to walk that th uh, over that threshold of faith, uh, that we would be convicted by your spirit to do so today. Uh, we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Uh, well, we're going to be in this uh, series called The S Word. Uh, and I'm going to peel the curtain back just a little bit of our staff, okay? I, I think I've shared this with some of you before. Um, our staff, we're, I mean, we're a great team. We love to work together. Uh, and just like any team, everybody has their role. And so we have um, the funny person, the kind person, uh, the person who is willing to do whatever, the person who is the smartest person in the room, the person who is, you know, just all of those attributes. And, and for our team, it just so happens that I meet all of those things for us. I'm kidding. I'm completely kidding. Um, but, uh, but we do, we have such a great team here, but one of the things, um, that I love about our team, but also like wish that we could kind of stop doing at times is like whenever someone in our meetings say something funny, um, but it's like one of those things that like, is it supposed to be funny? Is it not? Like there are a few different people that look to me to laugh. They look to me to try to get me to laugh first so that then I laugh first and then I get blamed for it. Um, and so I'm going to tell you who those people are because um, they're not in here and there's nothing that they could do to stop this. And, and I want you guys to be praying for me. Uh, and <laughs> um, But it's, it's Cody, it's Kat, and then the main culprit is our lead pastor, it's Bill. Bill is always like looking to me and giving me, giving me some sort of look like what, like laugh so that I can laugh or what are you going to say about that? And it just happens all of the time. And that was no different when um, we were introduced uh, this series called The S Word. Um, and when it was introduced, it was like eyes on Wayne to see what he's going to do. And so I want to make sure that I'm not the only person um, here uh, that needs just that's not finished yet, has a little bit more work to do. And so on the count of three, I want you to tell me what you thought right when you heard that this series was called The S Word. Are you ready? One just kidding. Don't actually, don't actually yell that at all. Um, but <laughs> we're going to continue and talk about this word sin. Uh, and, and this word that is, uh, and it is a word that 
Bill talked about last week. And, and honestly, sometimes at church, we can get away from it because we don't want to be not, not here, but it, you know, at, at, at church, we don't want to be too abrasive with this word. We don't want to scare people off, but if we're not willing to talk to people about sin, then they're not going to be able to hear this good news about Jesus. And so we're going to continue to talk about sin, um, and, and, and what Jesus has come and done so that we don't have to live in sin. Last week, Bill talked about, and he gave this definition of sin. He said, it is me disregarding the instructions of God by doing the things, uh, by doing things on my own for my own benefit. Let me read that one more time. It's me disregarding the instructions of God by doing things on my own for my own benefit. See, I see things, uh, the way that my mind works, I see things very black and white. I see, not like that. I see things like very, very much like right and wrong. If it's right, man, then it's right. If it's wrong, then it's wrong. There's not a lot of in between. Uh, I see things, uh, if it's fair, then, then it's fair. And that's what we should be doing. If it's unfair, then that should not be what is happening. I, I just see things very clearly that way. There's not a lot of um, gray area in my life, which is... Um, uh, how I get out of jury duty all the time because they call on me and I'm just like, whatever. I think we got to move. Whatever is fair, like, let's do it. And uh, the, whichever one the prosecutor is like, oh, I don't want that guy. Or maybe it's a defendant. I don't know. They never pick me. Um, but, like, the, the, the matter of the fact is, is that today we're going to talk about justification. Uh, we're going to talk about the sin that us doing what we think is best and ignoring the things that God has um instructed us how that sin in our lives makes us unjust. It, it, it just, it, it just does. It makes us stand before God as unjust. We are not righteous. The, the, the word justification, I'm going to mention it a, a few different times. And so let me give you um, this definition. Uh, the word justification is uh, being uh, counted or declared as righteous by God. Uh, being counted or declared righteous by God. And so as I mentioned that throughout, I just want you to have that definition, that working definition beforehand. Uh, Matthew 5, 29 is a, 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 where Jesus is teaching us. Um, and Jesus is teaching us about sin, about what to do with sin in our lives. In this particular uh, section, he's talking about the sin of lust. Um, and so I'm going to jump in at verse uh, 29, uh, Matthew 5, verse 29. And it says this, it says, um, if your right hand, if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than you will, than that your whole body would go into hell. Jesus here is speaking in something called hyperbole. It's an exaggeration of the sorts. Um, he is not actually telling people to like room, like, to physically take their eye out or to cut their hand off. What, what Jesus is saying here is that whatever is causing you to sin, then you need to remove it from your life. And, and I know that this is true because I read in the verse right before it in verse 28, and it says this, um, but I say to you, this is Jesus still speaking, that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her and this is what I know that Jesus is speaking to, adultery with her in his heart. Jesus is saying here, look, your eye and your hand, they are the behavior of sin, but that is not where the root of it began. It is in the man's heart. And that is the case for every single one of us. Bill talked about last week, uh, sin uh, came into this world and through Adam and Eve. And because of it, all of us since then, all of us have been born into sin. Um, the, this world is full of total depravity. What that means is that, this, that the world was completely broken once Adam and Eve sinned, um, completely broken. All, everything was out of sorts. Everything was in need of restoration. Um, but because of that, the fact that sin entered the world, there is total depravity. And so all of us have sin in our lives. And it's not just it's not the behavior. It's not just the behavior that needs to be fixed. That, too, uh, is something that comes later. But it is a matter of the heart. Jesus is speaking here and saying, look, your eyes and your hands are a part of the problem, but the problem starts in your heart. And so our heart is what makes us unjust before a living and loving God. 
It is, our, it is the things in our heart, the thoughts in our heart. Maybe it's not lust that you struggle with. Maybe it's lying. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's uh, stealing. Maybe it's uh, coveting. Uh, maybe it is uh, desiring something that the Lord never meant for you to desire, and you chase after that over and over again. Maybe that's what is in our hearts. But that is the thing. Not, it's, it is not just the action that makes us wicked and puts us away from God. It is the matter of the root of it all is in our hearts and that there is sin um, in us, in our hearts. And Jesus is saying, look, remove that. That needs to be removed in order for you to be made righteous. There's nothing that you could do on your own. This, this thought of, of if I cut my hand off, if I, if, I, if I pluck my eye out, that doesn't make me righteous before God because the, the matter of the fact is that sin is still at root in my heart. And so the only thing that could like, remove that, the only, the only thing that could make me um, good before God is if my heart was in a good place. And Jesus is not certainly not saying like physically cut out your heart and remove it because for several reasons, like you would die and then like you still would not have been like stood righteous before God because you were not perfect before then. And so the reality is, is that Jesus is saying there, that on your own, like you can't um, fix what is broken in your heart. On your own, you can't do it. And so for a, a person who has come to that conclusion um, without knowing the goodness and the grace of Jesus, we would all be in trouble. Without knowing that Jesus offers us um, something more than just the acknowledgement of my heart is wicked and I am part of this total depravity of this world and I am wicked and I will, I, on my own, I will be forever away from God. Without, if it was just there, then we would be in trouble. But there is good news for us today. The good news is that the God of the universe came from heaven. He left heaven because he knew of the wickedness that was currently and that was to come. He knew that you and I would be broken in sin and in need of a savior. And so he left the glories of heaven and he came to earth so that we could have life. He did it because of his love for us. And so I, I want to read uh, to you uh, in Romans 3 this good news that we um, believe that addresses the matter of the heart, that addresses the, this wrong that we have on our own, we have done this unrighteousness, this, uh, these, us being unjust, trying to stand before a, a just and holy God. I want to read Romans 3, 23 through 26 to see Jesus's response to our hearts. It says this, um, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace. This is for us who are believers in Jesus. We have been justified, been counted righteous by his grace, been declared righteous by Jesus, by his grace, and is a gift. It's nothing that you could earn. It's no, no way that if I can clean my heart up just enough, that I, if I could do this, if I could just really just focus on, man, maybe I cut my hand off or I pluck my eye out. Yes, the, the behavior will change, um, but, but that is my heart will still be in the same place, still uh, in root of sin and still desiring to live for myself and thinking that my ways are better than the instruction, than the instruction of God. I'll, I'll still be in that place um, saying that, 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 that I can't do that on my own, that it is this gift that has been given to me. This is crucial for us because we so desperately try to like manufacture or manipulate things on our own. And, and here is a situation and a, and a problem, um, this sin issue that we could have never fixed on our own. We couldn't have done it. And that is why Jesus came and gave of himself. He gave of himself to us so that we could be counted righteous. And it is a gift that you can, that you can receive. It's not something that needs to be worked for or earned, but it is a free gift that is offered to everyone. All you have to do is receive it. It says, um, justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation uh, for our sins. That word um, means as a replacement, as a substitute propitiation, like um, that there was this account of sin. There was this, we talk about this chasm between us and God. There was this, that our sin separated us from God. We had an account uh, towards uh, with uh, in sin that needed to be paid and that's what Jesus came and he did he came as our substitute as our replacement because God in his justness in his holiness there had to be something 
God said, man, I can't just, I, I, because of because of who he is and how holy he is, how complete he is, he could not, he could not be in relationship with sin. And so he said, though I, I desire to be in relationship with you, um, there's no way that it could happen because you were unclean and you need to be made clean. And Jesus said, I will go and I will be their replacement. I will go and I will be their substitute. The one who was clean came and died as though he was filthy and he did it for you and for me. And so it is so important to know that he has, by his blood, become our substitute, become our replacement um, and this to be received by faith. This this whole thing that God did was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance and his knowledge of what was to come, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier. He is just, he is good, he is holy, he is perfect. He is, he is right all of the time. And then he came for, on our behalf and became the justifier, the one whom, to the one who has faith in Jesus. And I, I hope so desperately that you hear what the Apostle Paul is writing to us here in the book of Romans. He is saying to all people who realize the depravity in this world, in their world, in their heart, that know that on their own that they could not do it. Know that they're on their own that they would not stand just before a loving and living God. Know that on their own that there would forever be a chasm between them and him because of their doing and not his doing. Know that on their own that because of, of the, 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 the place in their heart that, that there is a God who cares for them deeply, who is crazy about them so much so that he would send his son, that God the Father would send his son and that the son Jesus would come to earth and go through all that he went through so that we could be made just, so that we could be made righteous, so that he could declare over us that you are the righteousness of God. And that, that, that heart issue that was before, that heart that was rooted in sin, that heart that sin had, uh, that had said, I know better than God and I'm going to do away with his instructions. That heart that said, man, God is trying to keep me from having fun on this world. That heart that said that I, I am in control of my own uh, situation. That heart can be thrown away and be done with and Jesus can give us a new one. It, it, it might be cheesy for you to think about the, the, the surgery that happens or the, 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 the the situation that happens with your heart, but it is truly that the Lord has given me and, and other believers in Jesus a new heart. See, the heart that I had on my own, it was wicked. It was about me. It was about um, me getting what I thought was great, what I thought was best. But as I, as I really understood this message, this gospel, this truth of Jesus, that he is so good to us despite our wrongdoing and our, my, so, my, my sinful heart, and I really understood that. And I said, Lord, I believe in you. I trust in you. I, I want this gift that you give. And he gave it to me and I received it. And he gave me a heart that says, man, I want to live my life for you. I don't want to be a partner with sin any longer. Yes, I still mess up. But when I do, I am convicted by the spirit of God to move forward, to repent, to ask for forgiveness. And I am forgiven by a holy and loving God because of the work of Jesus. And you are too. And Paul is writing to us here and saying, look, this is an offer to anyone who would choose to believe in it. The grace of God is there for you to be made right, to be made just with God. You can stand before God and be just. So it, it, it doesn't, you don't have to be here physically at the church to, to if, you are, if you have yet to cross over this threshold of faith, you can say right where you are, Lord, I know that this heart of mine is wicked. I know that because of me and my sin on my own, I am unjust, I am unrighteous, but I desire the gift that only you can give. And I, I believe that this gift is for me today. And so I receive it. And then this is what happens when uh, the heart that was once um, out of line and out of step with the things of God um, is now like new and made new by God. We get into his word and he begins to renew our mind and our heart and our mind uh, sync up and we begin to act as those who have been uh, given a free gift, those who have been uh, marked as a, uh, marked with a substitute, marked by the replacement of Jesus's uh, perfection on the cross in the empty tomb. And we begin to live a life that points to him and brings him glory. We begin to live a life where our behaviors do change, but it's not just for behavior's sake. 
God is not after fixing our behavior. He desires to, to change and give us a new heart. And that's what happens when we begin, when we believe in the grace of Jesus. That's what happens when we have been counted as righteous because we have been justified by his goodness and his love. That our behavior begins to change, that we don't that we really can focus on the eye and the hand because the heart has been changed by the glory and the grace of God. And so for those of you who are watching today, who have been, um, who are believers in Jesus, man, let us, let us, if we've been uh, just honest, let's be honest with ourselves. If we have not been living by those who have been made just by God, who have been justified by the goodness and the grace of Jesus uh, as a replace, as he stood as a replacement for our sin, let us start to live that way now. Let us repent. Let us say, God, would you forgive me? God, would you make me clean again? God, can I show people who you are through the way that I live? But most importantly, will you make my heart and my mind new again? And for those of you who have yet to say yes to Jesus, it is today uh, you can do that. Um, you can just get alone with the Lord and, and do this thing that we call prayer. Uh, we, we speak with God, just like I'm talking to you. You're not in the room, but I'm talking to you right now. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and, and just like that, we get to stand or we get to spend time with the Lord and say, God, I, for those of us who aren't believers, God, I, I, I know that my heart is sinful. I know that on my own, I've ignored your instructions and I've tried to do things my own way. And today I'm saying no longer will I do it. No longer will I try to, will I ignore your instructions and do what my, what I think is best because it pleases me. But now today I say yes to your grace. I say yes to this gift of salvation. I say yes to your justification because Jesus on my own, I will always stand unjust. But because of you and your goodness and your love and your example, you have made me just. You can do that today right where you are. And what happens is that God counts you as righteous. You are now just in him. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you so much for you. Lord, we thank you for uh, the message of the gospel, the fact that Jesus was so willing to leave the glory of heaven to come to earth because of the sin in our hearts and our minds. And Lord, we pray that you would do a work in our hearts and our minds, not, not just fixing our behavior, not just encouraging us to fix our behavior, but those of us who are not believers, that you would continue to pursue us and that you would convict us of the sin that is in our lives and knowing that this free gift of grace and of just justness and to be justified by you is available. Lord, we thank you so much for your love for us. Um, we thank you that you are good and that you are gracious. Uh, continue to watch over us, Lord. Would you continue to guide us in all things? We love you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Guys, I want to encourage you uh, to have a good day. Remember, um, and let's not let's not walk in fear. Uh, let us not worry, um, but let us be wise in the things that we do uh, until we can uh, come together again. Uh, we hope that you have a great week, a great day. Um, if you have any prayer requests, um, send those to us at thetablecc.com. Uh, we want to hear from you. We love you. We're praying for you. Uh, we can't wait to see you. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you for watching the Table Community Church video podcast. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. 